All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Stacy Hall, who is in Las Vegas. How are you doing, Stacy? I am doing fabulous, John. I'm thrilled to be in your studio with you. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic to have you. And Stacy has coached thousands of entrepreneurs on how to attract sales satisfaction and success. Best selling author, TEDx presenter, and a leading social marketing, uh, media marketing expert and founder of Success with Stacy Hall. So you're busy, very busy. And your new book is Selling from Your <laughs> Selling from Your Comfort Zone, The Power of Alignment Marketing. And it's your fifth book. Congratulations. This, this thank you. This is my fifth book. Excellent, excellent. And I like the way that you have matched your the color scheme of your wall to the color scheme of our podcast here. As you can see, your your name, the orange in your name almost matches your wall. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Orange is I'm a fabulous over... color. There it is. And so what we're going to talk about today is how to discover your innate personal power within the comfort zone of your core values and personality traits. And so uh, let's let's get straight into it, uh, Stacey. It sounds great, but a lot of people, I'm not sure, have done the work to understand what their core values are or even understand their own personality traits uh, because we live in this highly distracted world today. So how do you how do you advise or help people to slow down so they can actually understand and identify their core values and identify, you know, their their strongest personality traits? Well, I, I'm going to say in my experience, when I ask somebody, what do you believe in? What do you stand on? what are your values most people can tell me that they'll say you know integrity family interdependence freedom though they do know in, in my experience over the years where i think that things tend to fall off in the sales situation is that they put those values aside in order to do what someone else is telling them to do and they don't take the time to evaluate if what they're being asked to do is in alignment with your values, because most of the time they're being told to get out of their comfort zone. So mm. to get out of your comfort zone means to leave your values behind. And so that's what I think is the primary problem. Yeah, no, that's fascinating because, yeah, as you say, like people are always like, get outside your comfort zone, get out, you know, think outside the box, do all of this stuff. And, and again, like you said, I mean, that might, you might go and do it, but it doesn't feel that great because you haven't actually identified the fact that it is taking you away from your, your, your core values. So how, how do people uncover what their core values really, really are? Because I mean, I think, I think sometimes I think people say, oh yeah, no, no, I, know, I know my, my values are, but when you really press them, it's hard to get them to actually articulate them. Well, I, I'm in my book, Selling from Your Comfort Zone, I offer a long list of values that I've compiled from various places. I, I'm, what I would say is knowing what your values are is one thing, prioritizing the values is another. And so, yes, I do think it does take some time to sit down, list them out, get them out of our head, because we can't prioritize anything up here. Mm -hmm. if we may think we can, but we really can't. And then be able to say, all right, which of these are deal breakers? If somebody were to ask me to do something and it was not in alignment with my value of what family means, let's say, mm -hmm. will I be able to have the strength to say no to them? If not, then I can tell you that value is not a number one or number two or number three value because our top three definitely are, if anybody attempts to get us separated from them, it would be a deal breaker for sure. Mm -hmm. No, and I like that. I like that concept of prioritizing because, yeah, what you don't want to do is get hung up on silly things, you know, that maybe you know aren't really that important to you, but figure out what are the things that are, are, are super important important to you and, and i think anyway i mean i think as we get older is we tend to have fewer maybe fewer principles or values but they're very very 
strong ones and we're a lot more kind of flexible from others i think when we're you know sometimes we're younger we tend to have a lot of them and then we get very rigid about things that maybe aren't that important <laughs> yeah it's true i i would say the difference is when we're younger when we we have opinions and when we get older we have beliefs <laughs> and and the the things that we hold true as beliefs are much fewer most likely than mm -hmm. things we've ever held opinions on um, because they've stood the test of time in our life. And so those are the things we hold on to as stability. We'll say those things mm -hmm. are the things that give us stability. Yeah. And, and, the, and the other thing here is the, it's the authentic piece too, isn't it? Because if you're acting outside your values, if you're not being true, if you're putting on a face or whatever, you're not being authentic. Therefore the people you're interacting with, uh, you're not being authentic with. They're not getting to know you, uh, your authentic self. And we hear a lot of talk about this right now. Uh, and then we hear a lot of, it always cracks me up, you know, when people say, you need to be more authentic. And it's like, well, authenticity should be something innate that you both write. You know, it's not something you can say, wake up today, today I'm going to be really authentic. Um, but talk to me a little bit about that authenticity piece, because it's it's so critical. It gets talked about so much right now, but I also think it's, 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 uh, uh, it's been confused by the amount of talk around it. That's well, this I could go on for hours because I agree with everything you say. Authenticity is not something we can manufacture. We're either it or we're not. And we may not be the best judge. It might be the person we're talking to. Mm -hmm. And we know in sales, more and more is being said about the importance of showing empathy for where the other person is at in their life, in their business, what their needs are, what their problems are. We can give lip service to empathy or we can authentically show empathy, meaning we're tapping into our own emotions mm -hmm. and able to really feel it and it will show on our face it will show in the energy with which we're communicating with the other person one comes from our head one comes from our heart and so to me we are being authentic when we feel it in our heart and can express it from there yeah no i i i would i would agree with that and i think that's it i mean it, when it's a natural natural expression and i think there's there's also there's a physiological part of that too because when you're being authentic when you're being real when you're when you're uh, being empathetic i think it reflects in your body you'll feel it in your body right you're in alignment yes. when you're when you're being inauthentic maybe you're not you're trying to be manipulative or whatever your your body physiology changes it absolutely does and, and again that's it's it's either we're crafting something from up here or we're feeling something. And you, you talk about the body. I say the gut and the heart mm -hmm. because all the nerves of the body actually line the colon wall. A lot of people don't know that. They know that we our nerves are in our hands and our feet and our ears, but they're actually also lining our colon wall. And so that phrase, gut feeling, isn't woo-woo. It's scientific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our gut feels things. And if we can allow ourselves to feel the feels, as they say, and express that in whatever we're selling, to be able to feel that passion, other people will feel our genuine passion. If we do not have it and we're attempting to manufacture it, create it from here, they can feel it too. And there's a difference between kind of a richness in a conversation and the word tinny just keeps coming to me. It's just, mm. it kind of echoes, right? It's like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't leave somebody feeling good or satisfied. It leaves them really more confused than yeah. having answers. Yeah, no, I like that. I like the tinny one. I think that's a great analogy. It's like when you go to the beach and you forget your headphones and they try to listen to music off your phone from the little speakers and it's awful, right? Yeah. Um, it's the same thing. I, I really, I like that analogy, something to to watch out for. Uh, so how about fear, though? Because a lot of people fear being authentic, to fear being their real self, believe, okay, I have to put on a, I have to put on a facade or a face when I, when I cross the threshold, whether it's a virtual threshold or a physical one, when I start work. Yes. And, and that is training. 
that tells people to put aside your feelings, to have a stiff upper lip, to get thicker skin. Our natural, most people, I'll say it this way, the vast majority of people, it's not coming from me, it's coming from psychologists who have studied mm -hmm. human behavior in so many ways. And, and I think it's really important for salespeople to understand human psychology. Our natural tendency is actually to be real. That's what mm -hmm. reality shows are, are so popular. Why they're so popular. People want to see people acting real, acting like they're, they could just be the person next door. Celebrity or success doesn't mean putting on airs anymore. It means being able to relate to, and to be relatable. And so the only way that can occur is if we allow ourselves to share what's true for us. And coming back to sales, John, if people are thinking, well, how does this relate to sales? It comes back to why are we selling what we're selling? Have we really chosen a product or a service that connects to our values, to our mm -hmm. belief system, to our desires to help the world? Or did we do it because there was a promise of a lot of money coming from the head? Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with money, but of sure. course, it's how we earn our, mm -hmm. our livelihood, right? But if it was done because somebody said, do it this way and you will make a lot of money and we have to learn how to do that, it doesn't come naturally, then we really are, not that we couldn't expand into it, but if it is right. so different from our nature and we cannot find a way to bring our nature into that experience, then we really have to think about doing something else, yeah, something I, that allows us to be natural. And maybe that's another word for authentic authenticity is be natural. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's, it, it, it is fascinating because uh, i keep i keep using this example recently because obviously you know we talk a lot about b2b sales and high-end selling and all of that kind of stuff um however i will say that i had an experience at the end of last year when i had to replace some air conditioning units right now that's not very exciting is it and and <laughs> the i i i contacted a number of different ones and you know they came out but this this guy came out from one company the one i went with sales guy just guy Loved air conditioners, loved everything about it. Was so I started to get interested in it. Like, and I'm about as you know, I'm about as handy as uh, as not. <laughs> and yet, I'm like looking at it and going, "Wow, yeah, this is." And I and I had such a good feeling after the after the sales call, the sales call, not after it was installed, after which it was fine too, obviously. But after the sales call, I was excited, and I was excited about air conditioners. I just, you're describing, I can feel it through you. He yeah. had a genuine passion. He didn't come to you with hype. Mm -hmm. There was a genuine passion. And, and especially in the B2B world, but also in B2C, yeah. he, the people we're calling on, they don't have heirs. They, they're in their office, right? They're doing their work. Yeah. They're trying to keep their jobs. If we go in and attempt to look like, you know, we've got it all together and everything's wonderful, we can also be very off-putting to them. But coming yeah. in like one friend to another, even if it's a brand new friendship, real chit chat. You know, like if we, I always say, imagine you met somebody at a party, you don't really know anybody there, but so you go over to the food table and there's a punch bowl and you're pouring yourself some punch and somebody comes up, you're not going to be rude. You're going to say, would you like some punch? And there's no reason to hype up. Oh my God, the punch is so great. <laughs> like just, you know why you're both there. You're there to find out more about their company and see if your products can be of service to them or your services can be helpful to them. Just start chill. You know? Yeah. Chill. I, I, I love that, I'll tell you, because uh, one of the things, I ran a company some years back, uh, Hathaway, it was spin selling. You know, we, we um, the Neil Rackham um, sales methodology, and we, you know, we trained companies all over the world, like big, big global enterprises. And what used to crack me up a little bit was 
sometimes we would have we would work with the company and they'd say oh we need to make these changes to the curriculum fine that's no problem we we, are, we don't call ourselves people they don't call themselves sales people and i said oh what do they call themselves and they'd say well they call themselves like business consultants or something like that I, whatever and i said what well, that's fascinating i said but you do know they're talking to you, knows they're a salesperson right so you can call <laughs> yourself whatever you want but they still know you're a salesperson so i'm i'm just not really understanding why you are so trepidatious about actually saying that you're a salesperson <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me yeah well it might be to be able to to attract people to the job right because there's mm. all this stuff so many surveys say the the word associated with salespeople is pushy and spammy and so mm -hmm. a lot of salespeople don't want to call themselves salespeople and if there's a job for a salesperson mm -hmm. they'll get fewer people than if you say you're a business consultant yeah. but you're exactly what you said if you're thinking like the other person that you want to serve and if we can change the experience of what salespeople that term means which is what mm -hmm. my mission is all about yeah then then yeah let's be real let again not put on these fancy airs i'm representing my company and its products and its services i'm here to be of service if it's possible to be of service to you and that's all anybody really wants to hear do you care what I'm dealing with. And if I can, I, just yesterday, I'm in the process of buying another car. My husband went into the dealership that we were looking at, met somebody, sales, and my husband has mm -hmm. a background in sales. So mm -hmm. he, he knows what, what to expect. But sure enough, he attracted the person who gets that definition of pushy and spammy. And I had a couple of questions, so I called the person back and I got that feeling. And I said, listen, I'm going to need to talk to your sales manager because I can already tell you're going to have to talk to your sales manager in order to serve mm -hmm. me. If you want me to buy, you're going to put the sales manager on the phone. Well, as it turned out, the sales manager is another woman did not attempt to push me, spam me. I asked questions. She gave me straight answers. She completely empathized with my concerns. I, it was just, it was brilliant. And, and I'm not so thrilled with the car in the first place. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, she actually has given me a much better feeling. I'm actually going to go in and talk to her. And mm -hmm. It's because she treated me like a human being, not like a target. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think that's such a fan that's such a fantastic example and, and contrast because I think everybody can can relate to that. But the second part of it was the fact that and and this is where it's not rocket science. I mean, the the second part of it was the fact that you ask questions, she listened, and then she gave you the answers the feedback now the listening part is the important part because i guarantee you the first guy he wasn't listening he was just figuring out what he was going to say next to persuade you mm -hmm. did you hit the nail on the head it, it's somebody who's learned a script was prepared to overcome any objections i had and the funny part is is i didn't have objections to start with <laughs> the more he talked the higher my level of anxiety got the more objections i had and i thought well before i just walk away completely i do have questions let me see if someone else there can talk to me like a human being and she did and is it the difference between her being a sales manager and him being a salesperson? I think the reason she's a sales manager is because she's always been that way. She's just yeah. naturally real. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I mean, and the, you know, the empathetic part is, is so critical as well. But one thing I do want to come back to just on empathy is I think sometimes people misunderstand what empathy is. And just you can be empathetic, but you can still sort of encourage people to move forward and make decisions. You can even deliver, you know, tough messages to people and still be completely empathetic. They're not exclusive because I think often people mix up empathy with sympathy, right? They think, oh, you're just sympathizing with everything. No, no, that's not it at all. 
I, I, I just had this conversation a couple of days ago. So that's it. We looked at all the different aspects of what people think empathy is. And you're right. Sympathy, like pity, right? Mm -hmm. Where that's it. It's just you're sympathetic with the situation and you leave them there. There's compassion where you can appreciate what they're going through. And then there's empathy. And empathy is actually the ability to hear what the person is saying and ask questions, not put, not pushing, but identifying with them, sharing with them when you felt the same way. It's like echoing mm -hmm. without playing a manipulative game, being able to let them know you have been in the same place. And when I say ask questions, offering, would you like to know how I moved past the same kind of situation. That's empathy, the ability to relate and then to offer mm -hmm. the option for a solution. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, and that might include you saying like, yeah, you, this is something I think you really, really need to do. I know it's scary. I know maybe you're, you know, you've got some trepidation about it, but I really feel like this is what you need to do and this for your success. So what I'm saying is you can still, you know, it, as I said, you don't have to just go along with everything. Your, your point is, as you said, you, uh, you ask questions, you offer, and you offer advice in the right way. Yeah, that it's, and, and you offer to offer the advice. Yeah, like there's that it. step yeah. before just as if, I think that's another I'm going to say in, in sales, I believe that's a place where salespeople fall down is they don't ask for permission. And, you know, there's a whole concept mm. of permission marketing. And yeah. I'm, I'm saying, yes, let's ask permission to give the advice or to give the tips or to give the information we have available. And I think just in our everyday lives, people appreciate yeah. that. It's, you know, friend to friend, I can offer advice and the friend can say, you know, thanks a lot, but I'm not ready for it. Or you could say uh, to a friend, I see something that maybe you're not seeing. Would you like me to share that with you? And then they have mm -hmm. the freedom to say, yeah, not right. I'm not in the place right now. Or yeah, I do. I'd love to know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, no, that's a good point. Cause I mean, we can often take cues from our personal life, you know, as you know, maybe your significant other, your spouse or whatever, sometimes they come to talk to you about something. They're not looking for input. They're not looking for a solution. They're just looking to be heard and understood. And then maybe later they'll come back. And I think it's the same. It can be the same in sales. Sometimes people aren't, are looking to be heard first. And once they feel like they're heard, then they may be a little bit more open. I, Absolutely. I was in a situation where I I was quite ill, actually. I was coming off of a very long illness. And somebody had made a suggestion to look at a product. And I did. And it did have an effect, a positive effect for me immediately. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd like to buy this one product. Well, what I got from the person who was selling was, well, you don't want just that one product. You want this whole kit of products. No, I want this one product. I want to work with just this one product. I want to see how this one product does for me. That's what I would like you to hear, this product. If I like this product, I will become your best customer. It took someone else intervening because I, I was done. I mean, it's just like, you're either going to sell me this one product or you're not. And we're going to leave it here if you don't. Someone else overheard the conversation and intervened with that person and said, are you hearing what she's saying to you? Mm. Can you sell her just the one product? I could, but, 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 but you know, the person I could. And all I heard was, if you can will you? And that was exactly my, you said you could, will yeah. you? Yeah. Well, I have, I have continued to buy these companies products for 14 years. Yeah, I see. 
What a what a what a fantastic example to to end on again. Uh, you know, asking a question and not getting an answer. I mean, you know, we're not being when we do that. We're not being clever. We're just being frankly annoying, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> um, and and here's the worst part about it. Last thing I'll say on this. Worst part about it is when it happens to us, it drives us nuts, and then we go do it to other people. What's the <laughs> sense in that? <laughs> Well, listen, Stacey, this has been fantastic. All of Stacey's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, I say I empower business owners to become wisdompreneurs because when we share our knowledge and our wisdom, we actually, you could say, okay, so now you're not just a salesperson anymore. Well, the, the truth of the matter is every salesperson, if they really understand what they do, they're yeah. selling their experience. They're not yeah. actually selling their products. The products get sold through the sharing of experience. And yeah. so that's what I love to do. And I love to teach people how to become wisdompreneurs. And um, I do that through my books. The latest one is Selling from Your Comfort Zone. And everything I shared with you here are tips that I took from that book. And but even though you didn't know what I was going to say and I didn't know what you were going to ask, that I loved it. And so um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm Stacy Hall One, LinkedIn, Stacy Hall One. No, excuse me. On Instagram, I'm Success with Stacy Hall. And on LinkedIn, I'm Stacy Hall One, the number one. Perfect. And like I said, we'll we'll have all those uh, links below the video. So listen, thanks again, Stacy. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, John.